Hello everyone, it's Jordan from AutoAid. Today we're going to be looking at a 2009 GMC Sierra 2500. This vehicle runs rough and backfires. So the customer complaint with this vehicle is it runs rough, misfires, and backfires badly. The truck arrived at the shop in running condition uh, for transmission lines and an alternator replacement. After they did the tranny lines and the alternator, the uh, truck would not start after. Uh, they inspected some of the wiring and found a broken ground wire for uh, the coils on the left bank. And so they repaired that wire. And after that, the vehicle then started. Um, it started, but it ran very poorly and started backfiring. Uh, at that point, they decided to put a new coil in um, on one of the cylinders, which was misfiring uh, worse than the other ones. And that still did not fix the issue. They found that the vehicle stops backfiring when the left bank coils are disconnected. <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> Our first step was to scan the vehicle, uh, which revealed several codes. Uh, as a P0171 fuel trim system lean bank 1 and a P0300 engine misfire detected. Next, we decided to take a look at the misfire graphic to see exactly which cylinders were misfiring. It didn't tell us, but I, I was uh, kind of thinking it was gonna be mostly on the left bank. And uh, we can see here uh, that it confirms it was mostly the left bank that was misfiring. Uh, one, seven, and five are misfiring slightly, but number three is misfiring the worst. Um, number eight apparently has a misfire there as well, but uh, even after this, it didn't count any more than that one little tick there. These other ones continuously started um, climbing up with number three climbing the fastest. So it appears to be misfiring on one bank. Go back here at one, seven, five, and three. One, seven, five, and three. So that's all on the driver's side bank that is misfiring. with cylinder three showing the uh, highest number of misfire counts. Next, we decide to check fuel trim and O2 data. Uh, the first thing that kind of jumps out here is the short-term fuel trim on bank one is showing extremely lean. It's adding quite a bit of fuel on bank one. And as you can see here, the bank one sensor, 102 sensor is also showing very lean. Um, this, this also shows lean on bank two sensor one, but uh, I just caught the screenshot while it was um, transitioning high to low. So it did climb back up after that um, to match around what bank two was around 7,800 millivolts. Um, it just looks low because of where I caught the screenshot. So just to recap on that, the fuel trims and O2 data shows bank one running very lean. They do not improve when the RPM is raised. So that kind of rules out a uh, possible vacuum leak or something like that. As you raise RPM with a, a, mass, o, a mass airflow sensor vehicle, which this truck is, um, it kind of masks the vacuum leak and the fuel trims go back to normal. But uh, this vehicle didn't do that. Uh, so that rules out a vacuum leak. The data shows positive trims on one bank and slightly negative trims on the other. So if we just go back here, you can see on bank two, it's showing slightly negative. Nothing huge, but... It is showing slightly negative. In conjunction with misfires on one bank, this usually points towards a plug catalytic converter on the negative bank um, because you can't flow um, any, any air or exhaust out that one bank. It kind of pushes all the, uh, all the air over to the other bank and causes it to uh, run lean. It, it just, it's pumping all this air over to the bank that's flowing freely and uh, it, it, sh it comes up as showing that it's running lean on that left bank. So, um, we're just going to check that first. We're going to look for a um, plug catalytic converter on the passenger side, which is bank two. So we decided to use uh, our in-cylinder pressure transducer to check for a plug cat. Uh, this method allows you to monitor in-cylinder pressure and watch for exhaust restrictions, which would show up as increased pressure on the exhaust stroke. Um, if there's a plug cat, you can't push any uh, exhaust through the exhaust valve or very little exhaust through the exhaust valve. Um, and if there's a restriction, uh, there'll be a little bit of back pressure and you'll be able to uh, see that on the exhaust stroke uh, in the in-cylinder waveform. So this is our in-cylinder waveform for 
uh, bank two. As you can see here, you have your compression stroke tucked at center, and this is the power stroke here. This little flat spot shows the exhaust stroke and then your intake stroke here where it's going into a negative pressure, so it's pulling the cylinder into a vacuum. Uh, this was right around the zero mark. Did not see any pressure on that exhaust stroke, which um, kind of rules out a catalytic converter. It appears that this, uh, this bank is flowing properly, um, and I, I don't really see anything pointing us towards a, a restricted exhaust or a plug catalytic converter. So as I just said, um, in cylinder waveform does not indicate that we have a plug cat. Bank one is not running lean or misfiring due to plug catalytic converters. We now need to figure out what is causing our misfires on bank one. Cylinder three is misfiring the worst, so let's, let's pick on that guy and uh, just follow it and see where it leads us. So on cylinder three, we are gonna perform an in-cylinder compression test. Uh, at the same time, we're monitoring coil and injector current on number three. Um, and on, on the next screen, you'll see a backfire event was also caught during, uh, during our test. So here we have the um, backfire event. This is the uh, exhaust stroke here. Same as our last waveform, our compression, um, power stroke, exhaust, and intake stroke. And right here you can see it's building quite a bit of pressure due to that uh, backfire. Uh, this is our uh, injector pulse here. And uh, I just happened to catch uh, the noise. This is, this is noise from the, um, from the coil, but uh, it, worked, it worked out well because we're able to see where the coil's firing now um, all on one trace. So I didn't actually have anything hooked up to the coil, but you can still see where it's firing because of where the um, inductive probe was. It just picked up the noise from it. Um, <clears throat> so it shows us uh, firing, or shows a vehicle firing this coil uh, very, very early. That's kind of the first thing I noticed there. The coils and injectors appear to be firing and the amperage looks good. Uh, compression waveform also looks good with the exception of the increase in pressure due to the backfire. Compression waveform looked fine on other screenshots without the backfire event. So just going back, taking a closer look here. Uh, the coils and injectors are firing. Electrically, everything looks good there. However, you notice something was off. Uh, the coil is firing way, way too early. That's way too early. Uh, it should be firing somewhere around here just before top dead center. Um, and in our case, you can see it's firing here um, on the intake stroke, or in the middle of the intake stroke, which uh, isn't right. So the PCM decides when to fire the coil and injectors um, based off cam and crank inputs. Uh, so next they'll need to be checked. So this is our vehicle here. Uh, I've circled where the um, the first pulse of the cam sensor meets the first pulse of the crank sensor. You can see here it, uh, it meets at the third pulse of the, uh, the crank sensor. And if we go over here to our known good, I'm just gonna zoom in there because you can't really see it very well. But once we zoom in, you can see that it pretty, it's pretty close. It matches up pretty close to our um, second or third pulse there. It's not exact because it's not a very good known good, but uh, this is the only one I could find. So our waveform seems to, seems to line up um, good with the, uh, with the known good waveform. So we've seen that the ECM is getting the correct cam and crank information. Um, so it knows when to, fire the, uh, when to fire the coils and injectors. So now we're gonna have to check coil command. Um, we're gonna check it by uh, putting a voltage probe at the ECM on the wire at the ECM and then compare it to the amperage output of the same coil. So we're going to go put a voltage probe on the number three command and uh, take a look at the amperage for the number three coil as well. The, f uh, the coil should fire at the same time uh, is commanded. All right, so here we can see our, um, our waveform that we captured. ECM is commanding coil number three to fire just before DTC, which you can see here in the blue trace. Uh, however, coil three is firing way before, as you can see here. Now I, I've got the, uh, I've got it inverted, but um, you, you get the same effect. This is where the, uh, the coil is firing. It's just the, the waveform is a little inverted. Um, so the ECM is commanding it to fire where it should be, but the coil is not firing where it should be. And, and that's, that's not possible. The ECM must, uh, fire the coil when it's commanded to. So it, it almost seems like we got something going on with the wiring here. Um, 
<clears throat> now, just to uh, remind you guys, they were in looking at the wiring and doing some wiring repair. So we're just going to have to go in there and confirm that nothing got uh, mismatched or, or messed up there. So when inspecting the wiring harness for the left bank ignition coils, we noticed that the actual wiring color for the number three coil did not match the wiring diagram. When inspecting the other coils, none of that wiring matched up either. So here we have our wiring diagram for our four coils on the left bank. The control circuit for coil number three uh, is supposed to be light blue, um, but uh, on, on our vehicle, uh, it was actually showing dark green. Uh, so the, the harness with the dark green uh, control wire was actually plugged into number three coil. Um, and I also found that when you looked at the number five coil, it had this light blue uh, wire plugged into, into it. Uh, now, one and seven were also mismatched as well. Um, number one had the red wire and uh, number seven had the purple wire plugged into it. So they were all, they were all mismatched. Now, after inspecting the wiring myself, I disconnected all the coils and uh, pulled the harness right out. And uh, when I did that, I learned that the uh, technician had removed the entire harness as I just did to repair and inspect the wiring for the coils because uh, that's where he found the broken ground wire. Um, now, how this wiring works is it, uh, it comes up the middle between these two cylinders and branches off and goes down to either um, cylinders. Uh, so you've got one big harness here with little pigtails that come off each, uh, that come off and go to each cylinder. Um, so what happened, he, he had pulled the harness out and uh, inspected the wiring and I guess got um, called off on another job and came back and uh, wasn't paying attention and just and just installed the, the harness in the wrong direction. So uh, effectively what had, what had happened was they all got swapped around uh, 180 degrees. Um, and, and by doing that, it was really hooked up like this. Um, so you had the number one where number seven should be and number three where number five should be. So they were just effectively swapped um, 180 degrees. So once the harness was removed and reinstalled in the correct position, the vehicle started and ran great. So in the end, what fixed this vehicle was removing the harness, flipping it 180 degrees and plugging it in the correct way. 